Hey friends, welcome to the Gospel No Man Girl channel where I talk about life, love, and living by faith. Today's topic is something that was a life changer for me. Maybe you have had this question before. What is the purpose of life? Have you ever asked that to yourself or has somebody else asked that to you? And if so, what are the answers you found that work for you? And because, um, you know, back when I was thinking about this, this was my 17 year old self wondering. This was the question I had when I was 17. Because, I mean, honestly, like, I didn't ask to exist, you didn't ask to exist, but here we are on this planet with a life to live. And also the things that affect that, that we didn't ask for. So whether that's the family, the city, the country, the religion or non-religion that we grew up in, all these factors play into our lives and affect us for good or for not so good. And again, we had no say on that. We were just born into it. And so, yeah, when I was, I, this video is gonna be a little bit longer than my first one uh, because it's kind of an unfolding. I'm taking on my journey of discovery and sharing the context for w what was going on in my life um, when I was 17 years old that brought me to this question and quest. So, it was my junior year of high school, so that's grade 11, and I was having to make a decision. I had the option to go to public school. So my parents uh, had prioritized and invested and sacrificed for me, my two older sisters, and my younger brother to have a Christian education from elementary school to high school. And my junior year was the only year they would let me go to public school because that was the only year they let my oldest sister go to public school, but we had to graduate from a Christian high school. And so I was looking forward to taking a bunch of classes that, um, that they had at the public high school up the street just because it was bigger than my high school. Um, but that year I was elected to be the student body president of the school. So I had this decision to make, to go or to stay. I ended up staying and I had a good year. My grade 11 year was probably one of my toughest, most challenging, um, just ups and downs, a little bit of heartbreak, like all those things factored into it. And it was just a full year. And for me, trying to understand like the purpose of life and, and you know, any of us want to look successful on the outside. So I'm doing all these things that from what I understood at that point were what I needed to do in order to have a successful high school to launch me into the next step of life. Because as I understood life, and maybe this may be your understanding also, the purpose of my life was to get good grades and look well-rounded so that I could, you know, get a good entrance to a good college and get some scholarships and, and study whatever the field of study I wanted to do to land my dream job and in college possibly meet somebody and then get married afterwards and we would both work and, and eventually have kids and do family and work and family and, and work, 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 work and family until we retire and then at retirement um, we do whatever in retirement and then we die. And unless, you know, in the context of, of Christianity, Jesus could come soon. And so that would happen instead. But otherwise, that's pretty much life cycle theory. That's how life operates here on this planet. And um, so I was setting myself up for that next stage. So as well as being, I had a full year, a full calendar, a full schedule, um, full of positive things. And so I'm going to share because I thought that's what success was. And I'm not trying to downplay this. Education's important. Um, having positive um, opportunities is important. And so for me, that looked like uh, also uh, 
I was playing varsity volleyball for the school. I was taking AP classes. I was in National Honor Society. I was volunteering in the community. I was working two jobs because I had a school bill to invest in and a car to pay for. I was on the worship team at church for the high school section. And also I was going on trips. There was band tour and choir tour. I had voice lessons. I went to Nicaragua on a mission trip and that was a game changer for my life. I, I went to Colorado to snowboard on a snowboarding trip with the school. And so, so many positive things that, that to experience, but on the inside, on the inside, I was wrestling and I, I was just like trying to find something that was life giving instead of just entertaining. And, and I didn't know where to look because as I was looking around, um, I was seeing, you know, some friends, parents, marriages, uh, start to crumble and fall apart. I was watching some of the challenges of, of single parenting. I was seeing um, schoolmates that were starting to drink and, and get high and, and go party. And to me, those things didn't look life-giving or fit with my um, values, but I was also going to church and, and I, I, I was having a hard time finding God in church in a life-giving way. And, and at the same time, you know, I'm, I'm reading about child soldiers in Africa. I'm reading about human trafficking in Europe and, and looking at the struggles going on in the planet. And I was just like, God, you don't work. Like, you don't work. Like, I don't, I, you don't work. <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm sitting there at a loss because again, like my personality type, I'm an INFJ and so I'm super um, sensory, whatever the word is there, um, to what's going on in people's personal lives as well as my own. And that's what I was trying to find solutions because we can try and look as successful on the outside, but the insides are of us is what, you know, I feel like is where the real, the real um, success is, um, not just the facade. And so there I was my junior year of high school and I walked into the administrative office one day with a question and I overheard a conversation. It was one of my classmates was talking to her mom that worked there and she was in tears. I didn't hear the conversation, I just heard the tears. And her mom at the end of this just said to her, why don't you go talk to Jesus about that? Go talk to Jesus. Now friends, the funny thing for me was that that caught me by surprise. And I didn't know what to do with that. Like, go talk to Jesus about your problems? About your tears? What? <laughs> really? <laughs> um, because again, I have grown up in a Christian home. We pray before our meals. We pray before we go on long trips. We pray before we read the Bible. We pray before we go to bed. And we pray for whatever else needs prayer for. I go to church. We pray at church. I go to school. We pray at school before classes. We pray at chapel. If somebody's sick, we pray for God to bring healing to them. So we're, we're praying. I'm praying. But... It had never occurred to me that I could share my inner problems with God. In fact, I don't ever remember, not saying it wasn't happening, but I don't remember witnessing somebody pouring out their heart to God. So I was like, how does one do this? How does one go about this? In all honesty, I, I just didn't even know how to be honest with myself at that period of time either. Um, for example, you know, it's good to journal. And so I was trying to journal back then. But if you would have read my journals, I had written my journals whenever I did journal in such a way that if my journals were ever discovered by anybody, they would think that I thought the right way about things, whatever the right way was that I thought I needed to be thinking. 
But the example I will give was, you know, there was the guy that I'd been interested in and I liked and, and he ended up dating somebody else. And I was like, man, bummer. But what did I put in my journal? I put, hey, I'm so glad that they're together. You know, they're probably a better fit for one another and I hope that things go really well. Please, like that's not what I felt, but that's what I thought was the right thing to think about this instead. And so as I reflect, I, th I think that that's the same way I felt I needed to come before God. What is the right way I need to feel um, and think about things towards you and about who you are? And, and you know, I need to thank you for this. We appreciate this and, and please bless this. Amen. But to, to bring before God, hey, I'm really in pain. Hey, God, life isn't working out so well. Hey, God, I lack wisdom. I lack love. I lack so much. Um, I didn't know how to bring that to God or that I, I was, yeah, that he, that he was going to give that to me. So I had another experience, um, my, after a voice lesson one day and my teacher, I was just sharing some questions with her and, and she said to me, she said, Dana, just go read the Bible. And in my mind, what I was thinking was like, ugh. Don't you know, like I read the Bible, I read, I know those stories, but it's not life giving. Like I didn't know how to make it come alive. And, and honestly, I just felt like I was trying to have a relationship with God, but it just felt like me that was trying. I was like, you know, I, I don't know that you're answering my prayers. I'm trying. It seems like you answer other people's prayers, but not mine. I don't know what I'm doing wrong or not saying right or not doing right. Um, but I'm not seeing you at work in response to me trying to find you. Uh, so I went home uh, and this was a couple days later and I was on my floor with my photo albums out before me. Now guys, this is pre-selfie, pre-digital era. And I used to love photography and documented everything, all of our formal events and our sports events and and hangouts and trips that we would take in high school and with family and all these different things. Loved photos. And so I was on my floor looking through all my high school photo albums and the Bible was open on the other side. I was in like Isaiah somewhere and Isaiah was just not speaking to me. I was like dry bones. I was just like, oh, I'm trying to read this book and it is not interesting. <laughs> it is not interesting. It is not helping me. And as I'm pondering all these trips and and just reflecting on all of this, it, it all in that moment felt so fake and so plastic. And I was just like, you know, smile, 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 pose, pose, pose. And, you know, we spend time just coming up with things to take pictures about. Like, what an empty existence. And, and so, because I knew that behind those smiles, it was not all smiles. And I don't know about you, but like when I was in high school, I, I know that, I don't think that we had a lot of like deep heart to heart conversations amongst my peers about family life or about just how we felt about ourselves. I mean, it's high school. We're just like, what's the next fun thing we're going to do? How are we going to entertain ourselves? You know, let's go shopping. Let's go to this sporting event. Let's go to the movies. Let's go bowling. Like, oh, let, let's go just have fun. And, and you want to look cool. You want to fit in. You don't want to be like, the person that has problems, <laughs> but we all do, and 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 doubts uh, about who we are and what we're about, and and trying to figure out the purpose of life, <laughs> and and because if I can know the purpose of life, I'll just know how to do it. I'll, I'll figure out the best way, the most efficient way to create the best dream life possible to live. If I could just know the purpose <laughs> of what my goal was, my end goal was in all of this, and. And so again, I'm sitting there on my floor, photo album on one side, Bible on the other, in tears, in just tears. 
at the fakeness that it felt like and the frustration I was feeling on the inside. And in that moment, just a cry came out of me. And I, I, I just cried out. I said, God, what is the purpose of life? And I, I kept crying, more tears and tears. And, and I'm not a big crier. <laughs> um, I'm, I've definitely shed a lot of tears since then um, and learned to cry more, but I, I, I'm not a big crier really. And I'm, I, I'm a thinker. <laughs> and so um, it took a lot to just to cry that out um, to God rather than keep things in my mind and keep trying to think through it in my brain. And when I cried out, and through my tears, I, I opened my eyes and there was a book at my feet. Now I hadn't seen this book before. I don't ever remember the title of it. I'd never read it before, um, but it was in my room, obviously, and now it's at my feet. And the book was called Patriarchs and Prophets. It's the first book in a five part series called Conflict of the Ages. And it goes, it's like a narrative, Bible study commentary in story form with lots of the cultural and historical um, features within the, the storyline. And so I just randomly picked up this book that I'd not seen before and randomly opened it and it opened to the story of um, what we call the fall of Adam and Eve. And I want to read you, I just read a few paragraphs in it, and I want to read those to you. And uh, it's going to sound like a little bit older English, because it is. And um, so just bear with me. You guys are all smart people. You can handle it. It says, it was not the will of God that the sinless pair should know of evil. He had freely given them the good and withheld the evil. But contrary to his command, they had eaten of the forbidden fruit. And now they would know evil all the days of their life. From that time on, the race would be afflicted by Satan's temptations. Instead of the happy labor appointed to them, anxiety and toil was to be their lot. They would be subject to disappointment, grief, and pain, and finally death. Under the curse of sin, all nature was to witness to man of the character and results of rebellion against God. When God made man, he made him ruler over the earth and all the living creatures. And so long as Adam remains subject to God, all of nature remains subject to him. But when he rebelled against the divine law, all of the creatures rebelled against him. Thus the Lord, in his great mercy, would show men the sacredness of his law and lead them by their own experience to see the danger in setting it aside even to the slightest degree. And the life of toil and care, which henceforth was appointed to be man's lot, was appointed in love. It was a discipline rendered needful by his sin to place a check upon the indulgence of appetite and of passion to develop habits of self-control. It was part of God's great plan of man's recovery from the ruin and degradation of sin. Whew, well, that's a mouthful. Well, <clears throat> but honestly, friends, like what stood out to me at that moment was not what I read so much. So all these years later, I have learned the truths of those in my experience, but it was, I cried out, instead of just staying in my head, I cried out <laughs> to God, uh, something real <laughs> in my heart, <laughs> and I received an answer, and I had a peace that I'd not known before, and I devoured that book. I just thought it was the most amazing, fascinating thing at that time. I still love that book, but, um, and that's what stood out, but as if I was to break this down today, like... The, the fact is that God created man without sin, perfect. He walked perfectly. And, um, and now we have a problem. And God's like, but I have a solution. And it's going to look more like me coming to you as a surgeon saying, you have cancer. 
I want you to be free from this. And if you'll let me do the surgery on your life to remove this cancer called sin, I will come in and I will remove it. And I also want to be your physical therapist. And after, as, as we work together, I'm, I'm going to give you therapies that teach you how to walk in new ways and live in new ways. Ways that are loving to me, to yourself, to others, to this world. He calls it the law of love. And... And I want to, <laughs> there's a song that I like right now called Shout Your Name. And there's a chorus and, and it goes, no one wants to make things right more than you do. Have it your way. Do what you want to do. Anything can happen when you move. So would you come and move here? Would you come and move here, here in our hearts, here in our lives, here in our circumstances, in our families, in our work, and <laughs> come and work on, because um, I feel like in the midst of our challenges, it's, it's easy to be focused on what's going not so well, and to forget like in, in our weight sometimes on the Lord, to be reminded that he wants to make things right for us more than we want it for ourselves. Like he cares so much for us and, and he, he wants things to be well for us more than we do. And he knows the way to bring it about if we want to partner with him. So that's our, our, our job is to partner and be like, hey, um, I, I need you to be part of the solution in my life. And... I love what another international um, speaker, author, writer, female, Lisa Bevere says on this same thing. She says, the Bible says that Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. Well, what was lost? <laughs> everything, everything. Relationship, sister to sister, relationship, brother to brother, relationship, husband to wife, parent to child, not just relationship with God. She says, we preach a gospel of where will you go when you die? Do you want to go to heaven? That's great, but it isn't about where you go when you die. You die in that moment when you are born again, when, you, it, when it's no longer your life, but the life that Jesus provides for you. It's about taking back everything that was lost. And the Bible says that Jesus came that we might have life abundantly. And then she says, Satan doesn't want you to know how powerful you are. He doesn't want you to know the revelation that you are a daughter or a son of God. He's more scared of that than anything else. Friends, I don't know your background, but... I, I'd have to say, I do believe in God. I believe that there is a Satan and fallen angels called demons and that there are powers of good and evil at work in this earth. Um, so whether you believe in God or in Satan or not, I, I would at least put it out there that do you see that there are forces of good and evil at work? And, and we may not see it like in those terms, but seeing how it plays out in humanity, where that there are, are people that do good. There are people that do evil, evil things. But in each one of us, that can exist in seed form. And, and that's what is sin, you know, where, where we can see it in, in its greatest, worst forms of lying and murder and stealing and immoralities and and. Um, just lust and greed and pride and jealousy, all these things in all of us, they can be just seed form, the smallest little bit, but they can also have areas where they're big in our lives. And, and we're part of that problem then. We're part of the suffering we cause one another on this planet. And then there's times where it's just full blown, like horrific things that people are doing. And so we see those, those in big forms. And so you can see forces of good and evil at work in people also. And so 
Anyways, but God is like, hey, I see all this and I want to make things right. I want you back in my family. I'm sorry you're having to go through all of this suffering. I, I tried to warn you that you didn't want to eat the fruit. Like I, I tried to tell you, I don't want this for you. You will die. It will bring suffering. Um, but that's how Satan comes to each one of us in the smallest ways. He was like, hey, Eve, try this fruit. It'll make you wise. Like God's withholding good from you. Like he's, he's um, you know, you're going to have... You're going to have more understanding like God does if you partake of this. And so she's like, hey, it looks good. It's going to make one wise. It looks like good food. Why not? And so it's always in the smallest ways that he comes to each of us with his temptations. And, and God is like fighting for us. And he's like, hey, um, I, I want you to be back in my family. The whole point of this is that we were made in the image of God Sin has come in like a cancer that's going to kill us. And he's like, hey, I have a plan. I have a solution. And my end goal is I want to restore you into the image of God. I want to get you back to what in this earth lifetime you never were. Um, because now we're in a broke down planet. So we're burst into broken downness. And um, But his goal is like, I, I'm going to get you back to what I originally designed you to be. But... I need you to invite me into your life and I need you to invite me into your heart so that I can start making those changes. And the funny thing is, um, there's before I continue, there's two quotes that I will want to share from guys. I shared two from women. We're going to share two from guys. And this first one's very famous one, uh, Socrates. He says, an unexamined life is not worth living. Thanks, Socrates, that sounds pretty depressive. But I felt like I found an answer uh, to that a couple years later uh, through Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones in his commentary on um, the Sermon on the Mount. And he said, the reason most people evade self-examination is because ultimately it is the most painful piece of information that one can acquire. That spoke to me at that time and so I'm going to jump back in now to where I was headed. It's just that God's like, hey, there, there's a lot going on in you. And, and so this life is about learning his ways, the, the ways that he established his kingdom um, in love. <laughs> he's, a, he's a God of love. And, and for us, this life is about trying out his ways. Do I want to live in this kingdom of love or do I want to live according to the ways of this world? Um, that friends, it does not look like it works when we, when we follow these ways. And so, um, and, and I find that in my own life, when I, when I learn God's ways, things seem to work out for me. I'm like, and I have a clear conscience and, and, and so the times I choose not to follow his ways, whether that's in ignorance or because of peer pressure or because I get lazy, it just does not work out so well. And, um, and uh, so I, I'm looking for ways that are life-giving and God's like, hey, I want to give you an abundant life. Learn my ways. And so we're learning the ways that God set up this universe to operate. We're learning to walk in harmony with how we were designed to be. And, and part of that is God having to put those things into us and we walk into situations in life and in our own existence where we see a lack and that's where like, hey, I have this lack and I need, I need help in it. Um, and so in his law of love, teaching us to love him, to love ourselves, to love others, to love this planet. And again, there are laws in operation that we have no control over, even like with our bodies. So for to have a healthy body, I do need to exercise. I need to move my muscles. I need to provide food in the form of nutrition that will be good for my body and learn how to take care of myself and sleep and rest and work and all these things that factor into it. Um, but there's definitely laws at work and, and communication and relationship laws, like all these things, that I, just learning the ways of love in all of that. And, and so, so much to learn, but Jesus wanting to partner with us in that and then bring us that restoration. And, and I know for like, when I can look at my life at times and get discouraged, um, 
again, that just keeps reminding me like, hey, I, I do have a lack. I do have a need. God, I need wisdom. I need understanding. God, I need your love in my heart. God, I need your love so that I can love better, that I can love myself better, love others better. Um, God, I need your strength. I need energy. Would you please give me energy today? Um, God, would you please just work out my day? Fit in all the good that you want. Take out what's not supposed to be there so that it just gets, just order my steps today. Um, yeah, God, God, I don't understand this situation. God, um, what's going on here? God, can you just show me what's going on behind the scenes that, that this is just not making sense to me? Can you show me what's going on with this person? Can you show me what's going on in this work situation? And so whenever I come up against a lack, whether that's in myself or, or in my environment, uh, that's where I'm like, oh God, I need your help. And, and I come to find out God, God is all of that and he longs to be that. And, um, and again, it's just this journey of learning who is this God who loves me unconditionally, who, who is trying to like fight for me when I, sometimes I don't even have the energy to fight for myself anymore. And he's just like, uh, and that he's asking me to love him unconditionally, to follow him unconditionally, to trust him unconditionally in a world that has taught me. And I'm sure it's taught you that 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 sometimes you're the only person that you can trust and um, that that other people as good as their intentions are they're gonna fall short and they may not always have the the same insight or understanding that you may have and so you have to look out for yourself and um, and but but there's a God who's like trying to teach me new ways and his ways and and um, and and I'm learned learning and relearn again um, the danger in setting aside the law of God even a little bit. So friends, that's what I have for you today. Woo, this got a little bit long. And I uh, wanna close with the Bible verse, Jeremiah 33, three. And it says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and marvelous things that you don't know. So friends, if there's anything that you take away from this, just remember my own experience. I called out to God and he answered and I had peace. Sometimes he takes a little bit longer when he, he when we're in a waiting, but um, but keep on crying out. He, he has an answer, he has a strategy, he loves you. And so there you go. This is the Gospel No My Girl channel talking about life, love, and living by faith. Have a good day, God bless.